Hey guys, my name is Ismaus, and today we're going to be looking at how to animate a sea creature like you see here in Blender and also have it interact with water uh, like you see in this animation. So let's get started by adding a plane into our scene, Shift A. All we need from this plane is a single vertex, so just select, deselect that. I select everything and then deselect just a single vertex and delete that. Then go to the modifiers and add a screw modifier. Screw modifier. And uh, increase uh, the screw value and uh, increase the iterations to warp to 2 uh, so that we have something like this. Then apply the screw modifier using Ctrl A as you move your, as you hover your cursor over the modifier. Then we can go to edit mode to see how this looks. We want to convert this into a curve object so that we can add some bevel. Uh, so we can go under object convert curve. Now under curve we can go under geometry and then increase the bevel. Uh, we can see a lot of facets here, so I'm just going to right click to shade smooth and uh, also increase the bevel just a bit. We don't need this, all this resolution, so I'm just going to reduce that at something like three. And then go tab into edit mode, select this vertex at the top on this at the bottom, and then turn on proportional editing. Make sure you have connected on. Yes, you can also just use O to turn that on. Then use Alt S to scale this in so that we have this taper at the end there. We can increase uh, the influence of proportional editing by using the middle mouse wheel, something like that, till we get something that looks like this. Now we can also start working on the materials here. So I'm just going to use, to add a new material here and I just add a transmission and uh, reduce the roughness. That to make it look more like water, I'm just going to add a noise modifier. So under texture, noise modifier, noise texture, and then vector bump, have this influence the normal, just like so. You can see what we have. Uh, you can reduce or increase uh, the scale uh, depending on the, f the, uh, the look you're going for, but I think this looks good enough. Now we want to have a few of these tentacles, so I'm just going to go to edit mode back again. Then shift D to duplicate this and then and then mirror this on the X axis and also mirror this on the Y axis so that we have something like this. If they look too big for you, you can go back to edit mode, select everything and use Alt S uh, to shrink them a bit, something like that. Now you can also duplicate this again, shift D and then scale them on the X and Y plane, holding down S, shift S, shift Z constrain uh, the z-axis so that we have something some details in the middle there and also just select these vertices turn on proportional editing make sure you have connected on scale those in so that they are tiny at uh, their margin uh, at the bottom there so we have our C creature you can add in extra details uh, say you can have an edge like that shift D duplicate it and just Taper it at the ends like this. So we have some extra water droplets uh, off uh, the main object itself. So I'm going to duplicate this again. And I uh, can change my pivot point to cursor so that I can rotate this around. Now, after you're satisfied with the shape, you can convert this to a mesh. And uh, you can even add in extra details. Uh, for example, I can add here an icosphere. Uh, I can use a resolution of one, something like that. Uh, make sure that everything is shaded smooth, something like that. Uh, you can add more details, smaller droplets around your water creature to make it more interesting and uh, have uh, more character like that. We want to be able to animate this easily. So what I'm going to do is add Let's move my cursor to the center, add a curve object, I'm going to scale it, tab into edit mode, and then subdivide it a few times. I just move these control points. Uh, this is the path our creature is going to, is going to uh, follow. So you can make it a bit more interesting by moving these points around. Uh, remember we wanted to, to be able to jump into the water and then out of the water, like that. So that's why you see I'm adding in these uh, waves. Can even just make it just give the path some character. Now, what we can do is uh, 
select the other creature and give it a curve modifier select the curve and uh, depending on your orientation of the curve or the or the creature itself you might change you might need a different uh, deformation axis but mine is going to be z so when i move this on the z axis it should follow uh, the path but i also want it to be rotating on the on on itself on on the z axis so what i'm going to do is uh, if i give this a curve modifier i'm going to add an empty let me scale it a bit so that it's easier for us to see and then select the creature parent it to the empty control p and now i can animate this and uh, the creature will animate now if i have this with the modifier on and i animate just the the uh, the empty you can see that uh, the creature also rotates so i'm going to have that animation let's rotate this let me tab into control tab into uh, uh, the curve editor so that i can uh, play around with these curves i'm just going to use hit v as well i can change this to vector and then just uh, increase uh, the rotation here okay, that's still slow so something like this yeah, I think that's good enough. And now we can animate this moving forward. I'll tap back to the timeline. Then move this, set a keyframe. And then set a keyframe at the end there. I can tap back into edit mode. So that I can just drag this Z location. Let's zoom in a bit. Now the creature rotates as it moves, as it moves. I'm just going to increase its speed a bit. Something like that. And I'm also going to reduce, to increase its rotation as well because I think it's not rotating fast enough. So I'm just going to increase that. I think that is good. Uh, maybe I also need to stretch it a bit because I think it's too short uh, for my liking. So I can tap into edit mode and scale it in there. I think uh, that would be a nice creature for us. Now, you can see in the original animation, we have uh, some water, and uh, when the creature interacts with the water, you can see that uh, it creates ripples as it dives into the water or out of the water. So let's do that. Uh, let's just uh, go back to the file. We're going to add a plane. Now this is going to be our water scale this quite a bit make sure that uh, the animation is going through uh diving into the water this the creature can dive into the water and then out of the water like that tap back into it more just remove these keyframes and uh, subdivide this a few times because we're going to be using dynamic painting uh, to create uh, those ripples so maybe this is a bit too much but let's see let me turn off uh close some of these Okay, so then now all we're left with is that to go to the uh, physics tab and turn on dynamic painting make sure that uh, your water uh, your plane is the canvas and uh, the surface type is set to waves and that's it for uh, for the water now, if we play back nothing is going to happen because we, we need uh, the water object or the water, water creature to be a dynamic paint object but the type should be brush and uh, you want to have uh, the paint type uh, set to or the paint source set to mesh plus proximity and now if we play back you can see that uh, we have uh, those ripples now we just have to set give this the same material water material as our water creature and uh, then we have our ripples like that now the ripples we're having here are not strong enough so we can select the brush or our water object water creature and uh, under waves here we can increase uh, the factor by some value so that our waves are more stronger okay, let's kill this in a bit Now, the water doesn't look as detailed as I want it to be, or like in uh, my original scene here. 
and see we have some small ripples going on so to add those I uh, can just play with the noise texture we have here so let's go back to the original but before we play with that make sure that I have this as a duplicate material so that you don't change other material for this water object now I want to increase uh, the scale of the effluents here so that we have the ripples on top of other smaller ripples so and uh, you can also animate these ripples by using ctrl shift t uh, i think it's ctrl t uh, to add uh, the coordinate mapping and uh, what we're going to animate is the x-axis here so just click select the mapping node hit r to set a keyframe and uh, animate it about 0.5 meters it should give uh, this some slight animation and also shade smooth and uh, and see what we have what i also did in the original version is that uh, i added a particle system a particle system for this uh to this uh emit to this creature so i went to the particle system, added the particle system, and uh, created a, um, a, an icosphere, gave it the same material, water material, and uh, set that as the particle object. That way we have some water objects, some water particles, emitted are uh, from the from the creature as you can see there and uh, if you want to make this more realistic you can also give it under the velocity you can increase the object velocity so that uh, these particles get their velocity from the from the motion of the object of the creature so see how that looks or how that behaves if you don't like how the water is just moving forward straight like that you can also animate uh, the a the y uh, value so i'll just give this a point maybe three like that so that our water moves in a diagonal uh, sense instead of a direct value like that and, uh, so that's what I did and everything else was just uh, setting up the rocks. You can watch the time lapse. I'll have it up as well uh, if you want to watch that. It's going to be on my second channel, Blender Money, if you want to watch that. Yeah, so thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.